Hey, hey everybody, Dr. Vong here. How are you doing? Tonight's gonna to be an amazing real talk with Dr. V. We're gonna talk about why exercise is not good for weight regain. It's New Year's, everybody's wasting a lot of time in the gym. I'm gonna tell you what you should be doing instead. And if you watch to the end, I'm gonna show you how to get a free copy of your PDF book. Isn't this a beautiful book? Who wants a copy of my PDF book? Watch to the end, I'll show you how to get it. Cool? All right. So, I'm Dr. Doug Bloom, world famous bariatric surgeon. I'm newly retired author of 13 books. And I've been on conferences. We're gonna talk about Velocity Vegas also. So what you can do for me is open up a tab on your laptop to www.velocityvegas.com. I'm gonna give you a special offer at the end. Uh, and we're gonna spend a lot of time tonight talking about what you need to do about your weight regain. Did you have a great holiday season? And if you're like the rest of us, you probably gained a lot of weight uh, during the holiday season. And the mistake people make since it's January is then they start going to the gym and they want to go to the gym all the time. But that's not good for weight regain. So do me a favor, like this post and share this post and tag some people who need to be watching this shit so they can get their stuff straight, right? Get their head straight. Um, cool. Now, while we are waiting, let me share the broadcast. And while we're waiting, just tell me where you're watching from, where you're coming in from. Um, Make sure you like my fan page. It's facebook.com slash Dr. Vong, D-O-C-T-O-R Vong. And um, make sure you like the page and follow the page. That way you get updates because I'm bringing back Real Talk with Dr. V. We're going to talk about all, not just weight loss, weight loss surgery, weight loss, but health, wellness, uh, wealth, fitness, all sorts of stuff, okay? Uh, I'm also doing a smoothie posts in the morning. So you really definitely want to be active on this Facebook page, cool? Uh, and definitely doing some special offers and everything for you. Wow, we already have a bunch of people on. That's really cool. So, what I'm gonna do is, while we're waiting, say hi to each other. I know you probably missed each other. And I'm gonna share. If you're watching this on a replay, you can fast forward to about the five minute mark, and that's when I'll start talking uh, with a lesson. If you're watching this from one of the shared posts, make sure you click the video and that way I can actually, you can actually read all the comments that are coming in. Cool? All right. So share the broadcast for me real quick. I'm gonna do that. How's your New Year's going? Can you believe it's already January the 10th? Can you believe this New Year's is flying by? All right. Okay, hello from Illinois. Hi, Gloria. Australia. Carrie, how are you doing? Um, all my Australian followers, is this a good time for y'all to be watching? I think it is. Um, it's a little bit late here, but <clears throat> I think we'll be all right. A couple more shares for me. Thank you, everyone who's sharing. Appreciate that. Oh, there's so many people. I love this. Everybody's talking. Let me know if you can hear me okay. Give me some hearts if the volume's good for you. We're gonna get started in three minutes, three minutes. Perfect middle of the day, Shannon Wells, Larissa Newcomb, welcome on in. Hi from Michigan, Esther Robertson, you got your PDF book, that's awesome. Jessica Ber Berrios, perfect. Hey Leonard, how are you doing? All right, happy for everything that's happening in your life, Leonard. How has your New Year's been? What are y'all doing that's different? We're gonna talk about that tonight too. Cause if you're just going to the gym, you're fucking up. <laughs> and right about now, somebody's writing, if you would stop cussing, I could share this post. <laughs> to which I say, well shit, damn, I'm so sorry. No, I really, 2019, I'm gonna work on my, uh, my uh, cussing, I promise. We always do real talk with Dr. V on this fan page, so you gotta, you want to make sure you're watching on the fan page for sure, for sure. Cool. So do me a favor, share in all of your secret groups, your weight loss surgery groups, all that sort of stuff, because I don't belong in them anymore, and uh, I got kicked out. And so, uh, but I, I feel like a lot of people need to hear this information. It's not just weight loss surgery. So if you belong to any other sort of wellness group. Um, please share it for me. And if you're one of these gym people who believes that gym, the gym and exercise is good for weight loss, I hope you'll comment. I disagree, but you know, that's okay. Let me say hi to some people. Hi, Rebecca. 
Pam Stevenson, how are you doing? Lizzie Brown needs some help. Atlanta's in the house. All right, hold on, let me click this. And, uh, there we go. Cool, we're gonna get started in one minute, literally. All right, Steph Furs, thank you for commenting. Tiffany Reyes, Dallas needs Dr. V. We might do something in Dallas. Uh, Tata Nisha White, hello from Tennessee. Nita, how are you doing? All right, Perth, it's 10 a.m. in Perth. Nadia Sullivan, hi from Ontario. Very awesome, excellent. Wow, these comments are flying by here. Thank you guys so much for commenting. It means a lot. And like the broadcast, share the broadcast too because that lets people know to come on in, how to find it. If you're watching this on a shared post, make sure you click the video so you can see all the comments. We're gonna get going here. Okay. So, if you're just now tuning in, watch all the way to the end. I'm going to show you how to get a free copy of my new PDF book. All right, the actual physical book. And this is a great book. Um, it's got 11 PDFs, um, three that haven't been published yet. Emergency Money, Emotional Mind Games, and it's colored, and it's big. Look at that. If it covers Dr. Vong's head, you know it's big. Look at that. That's a big-ass book. It's nice. Uh, the printing came out great. And it's really easy to read. Uh, people love this book. It's flying off the shelves like hotcakes. I'm going to show you how to get a copy, your very own copy. Watch to the end. That's my free gift to you. All right. Um, open up a tab, VelocityVegas.com. We're going to talk about our Velocity Conference uh, towards the end. Awesome. Excellent. Here we go. So, hey, Jen. How are you doing? Anna, welcome on in. Apple Valley, California is in the house. Um... Becca says, PDF book has a gorgeous pics. Thank you, Becca. Hey, Cheryl Freeman, how are y'all doing? All right, share the broadcast for me, Nadia. Excellent, comment, comment, talk, talk, talk. Jeff Wade, welcome on in. Ana Rivera, how are you doing? Let's get going. Excellent. Okay, water. Oh, the Dr. V diet challenge for January is no alcohol and no coffee. Woo, baby. I'm eight days, no alcohol, no coffee. Finally, the headaches have stopped. Oh. Okay, let's get going. Hi, welcome on in everybody. I'm Dr. Duck, um, world famous bariatric surgeon, author of 13 books. This is my newest book, Masterclass Guides of all my PDFs. I'll stay tuned to the end. I'll show you how to get a free copy of this book. All right, today we are going to talk about why exercise will not stop weight regain, right? Super important topic. Weight regain is a major topic that we are really ignoring in the weight loss surgery community. But not just the weight loss surgery community, the, just the general population, right? Obesity is a major issue. Now, raise your hand if you have lost weight before. Raise your hand if you tried dieting before. That's pretty much everybody, even myself. I've been trying to drop 10 pounds, all right? Now, um, so this really applies to everybody because when you try to lose weight, what's the first thing people think about? Dieting, right? They're going to start a diet. But they don't take that as seriously. They say it, but they don't take it very seriously. Instead, they say what? I'm going to start going to the gym. I'm going to start working out. And that they are much more serious about. So much so that they'll join gym memberships, they'll get up early, they'll um, buy workout clothes, new running shoes, all sorts of stuff, trying to lose this extra weight. So whether it's your weight regain from weight loss surgery or just weight regaining from just generally getting older like the average American population or, or Western population, I'm gonna to explain to you why exercise is not good for weight loss, okay? And then I'm also gonna make you a great offer at the end of the broadcast. So. Uh, stay tuned for that. We're going to talk about Velocity Vegas. Okay? All right. So share the broadcast for me one more time. Hit another like. Give me a bunch of hearts. Facebook knows. If you all share a bunch and like it a lot, then they're like, oh, Facebook's like, oh my gosh, something's happening here so we can get more people in on this feed. Excellent. Okay. So, now, I'm going to give you three tips. They're kind of jumbled up in my head, so I have to think about it. <laughs> All right, you guys ready for tip number one? All right. 
Now tip number one, now I like to start off easy on y'all, so tip number one is not going to blow you, you away because it's something you guys have already, already heard, even if you're in denial. Now first of all, I want to take a poll real quick. Comment if you believe that you should be going to the gym for, for weight loss. Now pay attention to what I said, for weight loss, right? Now we're going to talk, because some people are like, Dr. Vong, I go to the gym for you know, stress relief, for, it clears my mind, it helps me focus. We're going to talk about all that shit later, okay? So I, I got an answer for that too, because I'm tired of argue, having that argument with people too. Uh, but specifically, the first two topics, we're going to talk about weight regain and, or why exercise is not good for weight loss. Now tip number one, we're going to start off baby, baby steps, all right, little baby steps here. Okay, everybody knows this saying, you... What is it, everybody? Cannot, what is it? Exercise off a what? Can't exercise off a bad diet. Now comment if you've heard that before. Give me some hearts if you've heard that before. You cannot exercise off a bad diet, right? Now the really good personal trainers, every personal trainer knows this saying. And they better believe in this. Okay, and I'm going to tell you why I get more flack about this from, from the fitness people. Mostly it's because I'm hurting their business. But if, <laughs> if you're certified as a fitness trainer, you've learned this. And the way that they say it, I hear them say it most, is that um, fitness is accomplished in the gym, but weight loss is accomplished in the kitchen. Isn't that true? Have you read this or heard this or have you had your trainer tell you this? Your trainer says fitness is in the gym, but weight loss starts in the kitchen. Weight loss starts in the kitchen. Now the question is, why is it then, every time we start thinking we need to lose weight, we, our first thing is, I, I gotta go work out, okay? We're gonna get to the heart of this, right? now. Let me simplify for you obesity. It's just very, very simple, all right? Now, imagine if you have a baby, right? I have a two and a half year old. And when that baby pops out of the vagina, right? <laughs> you pick up the baby. What's the first thing you say about that baby? Oh my God, she is so beautiful. She's perfect. You say that about every baby, even if they're purple, or they're slimy, or the head's all crooked, their nose is all mush like that. I delivered babies during residency, right? Like, uh, every baby's perfect. Now, here's my question to you. You take that baby home. What would happen if you didn't feed that baby? What would happen if that baby did not get any milk or water or could not latch, right? What would happen? People are probably going, oh, it would get sick. No, it would die. That baby would die. What is the only thing that makes a baby grow up from a baby to a, a beautiful young adult like you? That's right, food, okay? Growth, it comes from food. Another way for growth is what? Weight gain. Right? Think about it. Because, you know, my original weight was probably 6 pounds or 5 pounds 10 ounces or whatever. I'm not 5 pounds 10 ounces. The only way to get to be 140 pounds is for food. That's it. Now, what I want you to do is imagine this. Draw a box. Okay? And put equals food. Now, I'm going to ask you this question. I'm going to say, how did you gain weight? How did you become obese? How did you become obese? That's my question to you right now. Now, some of you guys who follow me a long time or, you know, more weight, paying attention, will say, Dr. Vong, I got obese from the food I, I ate. I ate too much of it, even if it was good food. Sometimes it was junk food, but I just ate too much of it. Now, some people are going to say stuff like this. Well, we grew up really poor. We didn't have much money, so um, I, we only 
could eat junk food or fast food. You know the whole saying, you know, eating healthy is too expensive. That's the same thing as saying I'm too damn poor, I don't have enough money, right? Or they'll say something like, um, I'll say, how did you become obese? They'll say, uh, I hurt my back. I got hurt. And then what? If I got hurt, I couldn't exercise. So, well, I mean, you know, there was a time before we had gyms. I mean, gyms are only a recent American phenomenon, right? What happened to people before they had gyms? Why were they skinny? Well, no, no, Dr. Vong, I got hurt, so I couldn't exercise, and, and then I ended up just sitting around doing what? Eating food. I'm too poor. Got to eat junk food. I, no, no, Dr. Vong, I was good until I had a bad marriage. Something bad happened to me. Bad marriage. Which led to what? Well, you know, it was just really stressful. My mom got cancer and I got a lot of stress. Well, you know, stress doesn't make you fat. Well, no, 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 it did make me fat. But what did I do? I ate. See, every reason that people give for why they're obese is always back to food. We deny it. We sugarcoat it. We try to do a workaround. Say, oh no, you don't understand Dr. Vong, I'm special. Now I've got this reason. Well, listen, I'm an Asian immigrant. I spent six months in a refugee camp. There are no fat people in my refugee camp and no gyms in my refugee camp. But there were no obese people. Why? Because we barely had any food. That's the truth of the matter. And it was a stressful time. Still no food. We were nervous, didn't know if we were going to survive one day or the next. Still no food. You know, lost three family members on the trip over on the refugee boat. Still no food. Right? So, every reason why you become obese is from food. Now listen, this is important because what your doctors and research and surgeons are, we're trying to make it too complicated. We're trying to blame it on hormones and lifestyle and blah, blah, and yada, yada. It all comes back to food. I don't give a flying F about your hormones. If you don't have access to food, you're not gaining weight. Okay? So you became obese because of food. Can we agree on that? It was, even if you don't agree or you want to say, no, no, this had something to do with, okay, okay. You, this stuff has something to do with it. Okay. But what can't we say this is the majority? This is like the major. And maybe this was the minor reason. This is the major reason, minor. Would you give me that? Can we agree on that? That the major reason for your obesity is food. Okay? Fair enough? Okay. Well, if that's true, then how did you become skinny? So the next question is, how did you get skinny? And it's always what? Well, you know, Dr. Vong, I started eating less. I cut down my portions. My wife and I started splitting meals. I started taking half of it home. Or Dr. Vong, I had weight loss surgery and I couldn't eat that much and I got rid of my cravings. So let's put another box right here, right? I had cravings. My cravings went away. Surgery. Uh, I cut out food. I cut out junk. Oh, people will sit there and go, um, I, whenever I get stressed out, I don't eat. Have you heard that one? When I'm stressed, I don't eat. And that's how I lost weight. Well, actually, Dr. Vong, whenever I'm stressed, I don't eat either. I went through a divorce. See, there's a divorce over here too. But it all goes back to food. Amen? Truth? And I said, no, no, Dr. Vong, surgery was, you know, surgery was really had something to do with it. Okay, okay. But can we agree that this is minor and this is the major? Can you give me that? 
your reasons for getting obese, all your reasons, reasons, are minor. Your reasons for losing weight are minor. But the food is all those major. Okay? Which then takes me to my, my final point of this. What's different between getting obese initially and regain? What's the difference? Answer? There is no difference. No difference. It's the same thing. Hey, did you gain 20 pounds this last year? I sure did. What happened? Well, you know, I got hurt. And so I was working out, you know, five days a week, and I couldn't work out. Okay? So, you know, I just sat around and, and did what? I ate. Ta-da! Well, you know, Dr. Vong, I had weight loss surgery. Okay? But then I got really stressed out. I got into a divorce. And I started eating junk again. It's back to food. The same thing. Okay, so it's always food. Now, let me tell you, if a fitness person says, oh, no, no, you got to go to the gym. You got to work out. If you want to lose weight, you got to work out. They're trying to sell you on something, man. They're trying to sell you on either um, a gym membership, their training class, their video sets, or they're most likely, if they don't have any of those three, most likely, they're trying to sell you on themselves, the reasons how they got in shape. But if you ask them again, say, okay, how did you lose the weight? So I went to the gym. Okay, how often? Every single day. Okay, and what else did you do? Well, I had to change my diet. Uh-huh. Oh, but you know, a gym's a big part of it. Uh, not really. But it's their belief, right? But if you ask the gym people, eventually they'll get back to this. Fitness is for the gym. Weight loss is for the kitchen. So if you're struggling with weight regain, it's the kitchen. It's your food, right? I promise you. Cool? Sound good? All right. What did you guys think about that first tip? Was it good? I'm going to erase this, and we're going to do the second part. And then we're going to talk about all the reasons. Because we got to get down to the reasons, don't we now? All right. You cannot exercise off a bad diet. You cannot exercise off a bad diet. Now listen, some people are very confused. They'll sit there and say, you cannot exercise off a bad diet. And then they'll still argue about why you need to go to the gym to lose weight. It's like, eh. Okay. Let's take some comments. How are you guys liking this? Sounds good? All right. Let me see what we got here. Charlene Miller Williamson. This is so true. Therese Tierra Jones. I've uh, been known to, uh, to eat when stressed. I lose my appetite. Exactly. Eat to live. Don't live to eat. Grace uh, agrees with me. Jenny Salinas. Yes. Boom. Lots of booms. Story of my life. Thank you for tagging people. Awesome. Food choices. Kathy, that's right. Um, okay. All right. Maybe we'll try to sell some. <laughs> some good stuff. I am guarantee you I'm going to sell you something. All right. All right. Always in your head. I love it. Got to get in your head. Do me one more favor. Let's share it one more time for me. Let's get this up. More people in here. Good stuff for you. The best part's coming. Best part's coming. Okay. All right. Now, sometimes you will talk to people and they will agree with you that going to the gym is not good for weight loss. They'll give you that. And then they'll still try to convince you why you need to go to the gym. And once you back them up into a corner and say, you know, I'm trying to lose weight. And they'll say, well, yeah, you're right. The gym's not good for weight loss, but it's good for fat loss. 
okay? Or you need to build muscle. So what I want to do right now is talk about those two issues because it comes up a lot. This is the counter argument, okay? But Dr. Vong, I'm having fat loss and it builds muscle. Oh my God. Okay, I'm gonna tackle the fat loss first because it's the simplest thing. Okay? Now, let me ask you this question. What is the best way to measure fat loss? What is the, actually, you know, the best way? Is it the scale? You stand on the scale? Fuck no. Is it the scale? No. The scale absolutely will not measure how much fat loss you have. So the gym rats will sit here and say, oh, well, you know, you got, I lost, look how this, like, look at my before and after photos. Before and after photos are so manipulated. First of all, if you take it from a different angle, it looks different. Amen? Especially in the weight loss surgery community. Now, how many of y'all see this picture? Like the selfie from up here, down, so you don't see that there's all this fat down here? It's fine if you want to do it. I'm not making fun of you. It's just not an accurate comparison. You, if you do a photo from up here, look at me. And then you're sitting there side by side from a straight on shot where you're looking all sad and depressed. I've been hitting the gym. See, it's not an accurate comparison. So photos are terrible. And now, and now you have apps that can make you look skinnier, right? So don't believe everything you see on the internet. Now the gym people will sit here and tell you that you can do like calipers, fat pension, right? Calipers. So you pinch the fat and you measure how much fat you lost from here, from here, and here. This is highly, while it, it could work, it's inaccurate. Studies have shown this. This is a terrible way to measure your fat loss. Um, because if, did, did you take it from here or did you take it from here? Makes a difference. Did you take it from here this time, but from here last time? Makes a difference. You understand what I'm saying? Now, did, did the, the first person was a guy who measured you and the, second, the next time it was a woman who measured you? They, they might see the body completely differently, okay? A better way is to dunk somebody in a tank of water. But mo how many gyms have a tank of water that lowers you into and checks your fat percentage? And Planet Fitness doesn't have it. See? So it's a water tank. But it's not really available. Now I'm gonna tell you the answer, what is the best way? The goal, the standard for fat loss is something called a DEXA scan. A DEXA scan is the standard for how, what your fat body composition and muscle, your fat and muscle composition is like. This is the standard. But raise your hand if you've ever had a DEXA scan. <laughs> Very few of y'all, if anybody, Raise your hand if you've, uh, you know, if your trainer has ever even mentioned the DEXA scan. Probably not. A cheaper version that's almost as accurate is a bioimpedance machine. And we had one of those in my office before I left. A bioimpedance machine. So if you're lucky enough to have a doctor who's into weight loss, they might have that. It's almost as accurate as the DEXA scan. Much cheaper, much easier to do. Um, DEXA scan can also do bone density for you, so maybe some ladies here watching might have had osteoporosis or something like that and might have gotten a DEXA scan. But this is the standard. It's none of this crap. But this is what, this is what we see in the gym culture. Amen? We see photos in Instagram. And then we get delusional about what's accurate. And then you get, you know, you get defensive. And I understand. I'm proud of you. You've lost weight. You've been going to the gym. I get it. 
right? But remember, the gym's not good for weight regain. It's fitness. Now, if you want to say, I go to the gym for fitness, different story. But we're talking about weight regain. So then the argument, and I get this a lot from weight loss surgery patients, is this one. I want to build muscle, Dr. Vong. I want to build muscle. Well, out of your mouth, on the other corner, when you go, let's say you go, you've been going to the gym an hour a day for five days, five times a week. Let's just say, because you're really into it, and you go see your doctor, and you stand on the scale, what happens? You gain weight. Gain weight. And you say what? Muscle weighs more than what? Fat. That's our default statement. And it doesn't mean shit. It doesn't mean anything. A pound of muscle is equal to a pound of fat. It's just density. You're talking about density. And what's the only way to show this ratio between fat and muscle? A fucking DEXA scan. Not the scale. So when you go see your doctor and you've gained weight, you blame it on going to the gym. But it's not true. See, the gym didn't cause you to do this. Didn't cause you to gain weight. It was what? Food. And I'm going to tell you why. Okay? Now, every gym person who's watching me is going to agree with me when I say this. Right? If they're still watching. They're probably frustrated. When you go to the gym and you're trying to build muscle, what do you have to do in order to build muscle? You have to give your body the building blocks it takes to make that muscle. Which means what? You've got to do what? Eat more. You've got to eat more if you want to build muscle. But what do weight, what can't weight loss surgery patients do? At least initially, three months to five months post-op, they can't, I mean, they're eating like a few bites, palm of the hand maybe. They're not eating nearly enough to build this muscle. But when you go to, to explain why you gained the weight, you say it's because you built muscle. My answer is you didn't build any fucking muscle. You understand that walking on a treadmill at the gym for an hour every day does not build muscle. You understand that because you go to the gym for an hour and all you do, and you do this and you lift like two two pound dumbbells, you do not build muscle with two pound dumbbells. The only way to build muscle is with heavy weights. Heavy weights will build muscle. Okay. Not two pound dumbbells, not yoga, not water aerobics. Okay? So, why then, Dr. Vong, did you gain the weight? Well, if you are going to the gym expending energy, expending energy, what's another word for any energy, everybody? What's another word for energy? your body it means calories you're losing calories so if you're going into a calorie deficit what does your body want to do once you do eat which means what you get hungry you go to the gym you burn off calories now your body says oh crap you need to eat more and that's why you're hungry Going to the gym does not suppress appetite, trust me. I know from a personal, personal account, okay? But what are you trying not, to, why did you have weight loss surgery? One of the main reasons why people don't have weight, want to have weight loss surgery is because they don't want hunger. They want to tr try to control their appetite, control hunger. If that's true, then why are you going to the gym two months after surgery, or four months after surgery, or six months after surgery? It's gonna wreck your chances. 
Because you don't have your head wrapped around this hunger thing. That's the third tip we're going to talk about. So you are actually eating, eating more calories. Now I said that specifically, calories. So you might not be eating more physical food, but you might be drinking that protein shake that's made with ice cream. Oh yeah, people do that. You might be snacking all day long because you're hungry. You went to the gym twice today and after the gym you have to have like two meals or you have to have one, one pre-workout supplement or pre-workout bar and now you just add an extra 300 calories into your diet. You see what I'm saying? So this argument is dumb because you, as a weight loss surgery patient you can't eat enough to give your body what it needs to build muscle. Okay. And you're also not, most likely not doing the exercises that it takes to build muscle because, you know, it, with the exception of like former athletes who've gained weight and stuff like that, um, most people who've had weight loss surgery are usually, you know, the average person's a woman. Not really ever went to the gym. So they're not really doing the exercises that you need to build muscle. It's just a lie. And in fact, back to my reason number one, what happens when gym rats or athletes stop working out? What happens to them? They gain weight. True? A lot of them, most of them. What happens when all of these bodybuilders, they're not competing? What happens to them? They get fat in the off season. Right? Why is that? Because they're eating the same way and they're not working out. Which takes me to um, another thing I meant to talk about. Weight loss surgery patients are so confused. They'll say something like, well, when I was going to the gym, at least I was maintaining my weight loss. And then I stopped going to the gym and I gained the weight. Uh, yeah, you just made my point. They think in their head that going to the gym was keeping their weight down. No. It was just burning off the extra calories that you had. So when you stopped going to the gym, your poor eating habits showed up. It's the same reason why bodybuilders get fat, why football players get fat, why softball players get fat, if they don't change their diet. Exercise is not good for weight loss, okay? Um, I hope this makes sense for you because it's super important that we get past all of this bullshit, these excuses and these reasons, and get down to the heart of it. And that's what we're gonna talk about in the next tip. Cool? What'd you guys think? Make sense? Helpful? Give me some comments. Let me see. Let's see what we got here. All right. Stop being negative one, not worth comments, that's right. All right. Hi, Lace, Cheryl, and Lemon Rothenberg. How are y'all doing, Les? Excellent. Glad you guys are enjoying this. Okay. Excellent. Hope you guys are doing good. All right. Uh, let me get to the bottom here. Makes sense. Janelle Jarvis, thank you. Rosie, Sue first. Sorry, the sound keeps cutting out for you. Susan Lee, been there. Excellent. Okay. Excellent, excellent. All right. All right. Okay. Don't forget to go to um, velocityvegas.com. We'll make you an offer here at the end. Hope you guys are enjoying this. This last tip is gonna be super important. So do me a favor, if you haven't shared the broadcast, even if you have shared it, share it one more time, okay? People are talking about loose skin. I forgot to mention that. Remember, exercise does not help with loose skin. That's a lie. Um, David Williams, you demand. Thank you, David, appreciate you. Okay. 
This third tip is super important. I'd like you to share this broadcast for me because we're going to get down to what you really should be doing instead. And then I'm going to give you an opportunity to get a free copy of my PDF book. Okay, this book on Amazon is 50 bucks. All right, so we're going to check that out here in a second. Cool. All right. Okay, I hope you guys, I hope you guys liked that second tip, and I hope it clarified a lot of misconceptions uh, that people have about uh, the reasons why weight loss surgery patients shouldn't be working out, or what you see on um, on the scale. Okay, so what I'm going to talk about is uh, the reason tip number three, and this is the most important tip, quite honestly. Okay. You're most likely wasting time. And I'd like to add the word precious here. You're really wasting precious time. Okay? Precious, precious time. Now, I'm a pretty busy guy. You know, even though I've left surgery, semi-retired, and uh, I still have my days are really full. Now, when people try to lose weight, they will, or get in shape, or whatever they want to say, just comment. How often do you go to the gym? How often do you work out? What do you see people posting? What are they saying that how often they're working out? Um, an hour a day? I would say people are saying an hour a day, one hour a day, and I would say the average is uh, times three days, three, three days a week. Is that true? But I've had patients tell me they go to the gym seven days a week. I had one patient tell me she goes to the gym twice a day. And I was like, twice a day? How do you have time twice a day? Go, yup, in the morning before I go to work and in the evenings after, you know, uh, after everything's done, so twice a day, some people go three times a day. Now, unless you're a personal trainer or you're in the fitness competition or bodybuilding competition, you got no reason going to the gym three hours a day, quite honestly. But here's what I want to do. <clears throat> About 10% of people actually have a plan. When they go to the gym, they have a plan. They have a routine. Now, you know, they might have a routine, a good routine. By that I mean they've read something, they're following a manual. Um, they might have a trainer, right? They might have milestones. You're trying to do milestones, like your personal best, um, how, you know, how many, how many things you can do, how quickly you can do them. There's usually a progression. And then there's usually a cycle. By that I mean they don't always do the same workout. They're, they're trying to do cardio one day. They're trying to, uh, they'll do uh, strength training or bulking up for six weeks and then they'll switch to like uh, more endurance or they'll switch to, to flexibility. Either way, they're cycling their workouts. That's about 10% of people. These are what you see on Instagram most of the time. <laughs> you know, great shape, etc. That means that 90% is the rest of us. <laughs> People like Dr. V. Never really like to go to the gym. I don't like the smell of the gym. I don't like the sweat on the seat cushions and people don't wipe down the things. I don't like the big beefy guys yelling and screaming. Uh, I don't like the women who can bench press more than me. <laughs> so the rest of us, and I had this conversation with my trainer, Miguel, you know, like he sees people at the gym and they just kind of walk in and they just, this is their workout. They just kind of like walk around and they're just a little bit lost. They, they might sit there and they'll, they'll grab some dumbbells and they'll do this and you know, they'll maybe try to sit down on a lap machine or something. 
and they might do a few exercises. They might spend, you know, there might be time to, oh, my hour's up. You know, one time I went to the gym, this was several years ago. I went to the gym and there was this woman, probably 55 years old. She's, uh, I'm walking in, changing clothes. She's on her um, elliptical thing, right? She's in her elliptical. I go do my little workout with my trainer. And then I, I change clothes and I come back 30 minutes later because it was lunchtime. 30 minutes later, and she's, she's on her elliptical, still going, and I'm about to leave, and she goes, man, just finished my hour. She did an hour on the elliptical. It's not gonna get you the results you want. I promise you, it isn't, okay? None of those beach bodies that you see, or the Instagram photos, or any of that stuff, no one got that body from doing one exercise for an hour. It doesn't work. So the rest of us don't have plans. No plan. No routine. No help. And that's the key. So we're walking around. Which equals what? No results. But you did maybe expend a little bit more calories. Or, you know... You drank that pre-workout shake. But ultimately, what happens? We quit. It's too frustrating. We don't see results. It's taking up too much of time. I don't like the smell of the changing room, the locker room. I keep thinking I'm going to get fungal infections in my feet. So I quit. You know? It's just not for me. This is 90% of people. And you're about to see it. Because... All the gyms are about to get empty here again, right? Because this is how most people do it. Now, if you're one of the 10% people, good for you. I'm happy for you. Proud of you, right? But my point is still true. If you don't change your diet, you're not going to lose the weight. And if you stop working out, if you eat junk and you're working out, the second you stop working out, you're going to gain weight. You're going to lose this figure. You're going to lose that figure you worked on. It's true for me too. Okay, but let's say the point of this is say an average person does an hour a day for three days.